The uh, Attorney General in the state of Louisiana, Jeff Landry, joins us now and joins us uh, by t telephone. Uh, yesterday was the 12th anniversary, wasn't it, sir, of, um, of Katrina? And, and here we are dealing with this uh, terrible storm. How are things where you are? Yes, well, uh, you know, things are getting better each and every hour as the storm continues to track northward. I think the biggest problem we're having right now is that south winds along the coast are definitely stacking up the water, preventing um, those rivers and bayous that are trying to flow south uh, from being able to drain properly. And so, you know, those areas that were flooded, you know, sometimes the water starts to back up. But hopefully, as the storm continues to make its, its path across uh, the country towards the east, uh, we'll start to get some relief. Of course, that's what people are praying for, not only in the um, southwestern part of, of your state, but obviously in Texas, where they've been hit so hard. You know, our reporter Rick Leventhal was just mentioning before the last break how many people from Louisiana, part of this Cajun Navy, as they're called, have gone into Texas to help out, right? I know your state has its own issues, but you've also been helping out Texas big time. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Louisiana and Texas are, are great neighbors. Uh, a lot of people uh, move back and forth, working in the oil and gas industry, working in the refining industry, and, and so they traverse the state. You know, sometimes they'll live out in Louisiana for a number of years, and then they may move over to Houston for a promotion or so. Or, or the likes, and, and so there is. There's, there's, there's a lot of camaraderie between the, the two states, and we definitely want to do everything we can to help bring relief to those people in Louisiana that have been affected, but certainly those uh, in Texas as well. You know, it, I, you know, I got to tell you, the response from the administration has been just overwhelming. I don't know mm -hmm. if people understand, but 53% of the refining capacity in the entire country is along the Gulf Coast, with 28% of that in Texas, and the balance. A quarter of that in Louisiana, right? And 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 the administration has been great. You know, EPA um, administrator Scott Pruitt today issued a, a waiver uh, that basically will standardize gasoline blends across the South and provide a lot of relief for consumers out there. These are things that we learned uh, during Katrina, uh, and just allowing that standardization is, is going to save consumers as far away as, say, Florida. So with we were talking about this a little bit earlier, what you bring up, and with all that capacity that's knocked off, the numbers into 20, some, you know, in terms of all of U.S. capacity that's offline right now, you mentioned the, the overall numbers in the, in the Gulf. So you think that we'll be able to limit, because of that move, um, the price spikes that we see around the country for gas prices? Oh, it's absolutely going to protect it. Yeah. I, mean, it I mean, what we're seeing out of this administration is quick thinking and quick decisions. I mean, you know, it, it's hard for people to understand, but right now the refining capacity that's off, represents about 3 million barrels of gasoline per day that's off the market, that's not being refined. That's about 30% of the total amount of gasoline consumed in the nation. When you standardize that gasoline, when you allow refineries to use one particular blend of gasoline to be sold across the South, they're automatically going uh, to um, acquire a 5% increase in the amount of refining capacity hmm. that's left. So those things are big. Those that things is, mean a lot. Yeah, to that's, I mean, that's real money. People are in, no, in it, all. I, and what about, I, but won't there be shortages in some places? Are we worried about that? Well, again, that's what, that's what these waivers are designed to do. They're, they're designed to give us a buffer against those types of shortages. Okay. Um, and certainly without these waivers, you would see extreme spikes in gasoline. People in Florida would be paying nauseating amounts. Uh, for gasoline because you couldn't blend the type that they, they need in that particular area. When you go to a, a standardized blend, it allows right. the refiners across the country to save consumers money. And, and you well, know, my hat's off to Scott Pruitt and, and yep. the president. A little bit of a silver lining, if anything, at least uh, avoiding the worst when it comes to that part of it. Jeff Landry, thank you, sir. We appreciate thank, the insight tonight. Thank you.